The first leaders' TV debate, the emergence of a completely new party, many socially distanced campaign events, lots of social media comments and the small matter of the SNP Spring Conference. And that's all just in the first week of the Holyrood election campaign. Five week, weeks today, we're going to the polls, Thursday the 6th of May. Between now and then, Good Morning Scotland will be speaking to the leaders of each of the large parties. This morning, we're joined by the SNP leader, Nicholas Sturgeon. Good morning to you. Good morning. Is a super majority for independence achievable in the next parliament? Well, I'm concentrating on winning, hopefully, a simple majority for the SNP. But, you know, I'm focused right now on persuading as many people as possible to vote SNP uh, for their constituency candidate and also on their regional ballot, because that is essential to making sure the SNP can win the election. Uh, um, if you want an SNP government, if you want to have me re-elected as First Minister, if you want both of those things, then voting SNP is the only way to bring it about. But if you want independence, as Alex Salmon suggests, then... It isn't a second vote for the SNP potentially a waste, given the way the system works? Is it more likely to get this supermajority talks about if people vote for the Alaba party or another pro-independence party? Well, you know, you only have to cast your mind back to the days when Alex Hammond was leader of the SNP and he didn't say what he is saying now. What he said then, uh, and he was right then, is that the only way to make sure you get uh, the government you want is to vote for the party uh, that will be that government. Anything else is trying to gamble with the system, game the system, take a chance on the outcome of the election. And if you want to see an SNP government elected that then has the ability to uh, deliver an independent referendum, then you don't get that by voting for somebody else. You only get that by voting SNP. There are two things that are required to win independence. Firstly, a majority, a simple majority in the Scottish Parliament that can bring about an independence referendum. And then, crucially, the most important thing of all is that we win a majority amongst the Scottish population for independence. And anybody who tries to suggest that there's a shortcut to that or that we can somehow game or trick our way to independence, frankly, is misleading people. It's got to be through a process that is not just legitimate, but seen to be legitimate so that it can command respect and authority at home and internationally as well. Why do you think many former SNP members, some elected members, see this new party as a better option than the one you lead? Well, look, I'm, I'm not sure there is, are as many uh, SNP members as uh, Mr Salmon might have been hoping for that have seen it that way. But, you know, that's for those uh, who want to support another party and join another party to, to answer. What I know is that I lead a party that has a growing membership right now, actually, um, and a party that has a commanding position in the opinion polls. And a divided the SNP. party? Um, I don't think the SNP is divided. And I think if you look at the, the breakdown of opinion polls that tests uh, the views and attitudes of SNP voters, then you will find that actually uh, the SNP is the most united of all the parties in, in Scotland. We're in a commanding position. Support for the SNP has never been higher than it is right now. And actually support for independence has never been higher than it is right now. The choice that the SNP has, and I think most people in the SNP, in fact, I think virtually everybody in the SNP recognises this, is to focus ourselves outwards on continuing to persuade the Scottish people, not be complacent and not start to look inwards and give any impression that we're more interested in talking to each other than we are in talking to and representing and leading the country at large. Well, one of the, one of the, the divisions within your party is the policy on gender self-identification. Uh, is it time to drop that for the sake of party unity? Uh, no, uh, look, I, again, I, I think you're putting to me something there that is not necessarily completely borne out. Yes, there are many people in the SNP in all parties and in Scotland as a whole uh, that... Uh, oppose reforms to the gender recognition legislation. There are many women, and I understand this, who see that as some kind of threat to women's rights. And what I would say is that I absolutely, as a, a lifelong feminist, would never support anything that I thought was a, a danger or a risk to women's rights. But I also think, you know, trans people are some of the most prejudiced against, discriminated against and stigmatised groups in our society. So and are I those who oppose your policy right. transphobic? Uh, no, I, I don't think... I think there are transphobic people uh, who oppose this, not just in the SNP, but across society. Anybody who doesn't think transphobia is a big uh, problem in our society, uh, I think, is probably not paying attention. But what I don't see, and I've never said, is that anybody who is raising concerns is, by definition, transphobic. I don't believe that is the case. You said a few days ago, I know Alex Salmond very well. He makes big claims which often don't stand up to scrutiny. Which claims? 
Uh, I was referring specifically and directly to the conspiracy theories that he's been peddling over the past year about his own, the allegations about his own conduct, uh, conspiracy theories that ultimately have been shown to have no substance to them. Um, and unfortunately, some people in opposition parties were prepared to indulge for some time. Well, he makes big claims that don't stand up to scrutiny, you say. He's a gambler. He treats politics like a game. Uh, did you know this in previous elections when you asked the public to back him? Look, I'm making comment on how I think he is behaving right now. Um, and I think he is uh, seeking to ask people to gamble on the outcome of this election. I don't think uh, that is the right thing to do. I think if you want an SNP government, you've got to vote for an SNP government. And there are many positive reasons to do so. I, I also don't think, and I, I wouldn't include everybody who has supported his new party in this uh, definition, because some of the people I've seen supporting it, I'm pretty sure their intentions are absolutely sincere and genuine. But I don't think this is a friendly gesture on Mr Salmon's part uh, towards the SNP. Look, When did you have this last... epiphany about Alex Salmon? Because in previous elections, oh, you've told, Gary, you've told Gary, the public to back him. Gary, what does it say about your judgment in previous elections when, Gary, you, when you're on the same side? You said he was the man to lead Scotland. Look, Two, two things here. Everybody knew Alex Salmond was a gambler because he has never made any secret of it. He backs the horses uh, on a, an almost daily basis. So you knew that as well as, as I knew that. The point I'm making is about how he is behaving now. But the other thing is... He doesn't did, look or sound any different to the Alex Salmond that well, you backed previously. Well, I, I don't know if you've been paying any attention in the last couple of years, but there have been allegations and suggestions made about his conduct, some of which he conceded in the course of a criminal trial in which he was found not guilty of criminal behaviour, let me Which you had no knowledge of add, previously. Which I had no knowledge of. So yes, I trusted Alex Salmon for a long, long time. Uh, and I've Sounds as though he's really pulled the wool over your eyes. Well, I think in terms of some of the things that we've been talking about for the last couple of years, I'm not the only one in that position. Now, you can suggest that I somehow bear a responsibility for that. And trust me, I've you know, spent a lot of time over the last couple of years, you know, agonising myself over some of this stuff. Or you can decide that actually how he chose to behave towards women was his responsibility and his responsibility only. Uh, some of the people who've left your party or at least have signed up for the Alba party have done so, they say, because they feel you're dragging your heels on independence. Since 2016, you have promised a referendum pretty much every year and that hasn't happened. Are you now saying to those who vote SNP that this will happen by the end of 2023, given you said the middle of the parliament? Well, let me come on to that point directly. But on the first part of your question, support for independence under my leadership of the SNP is at a higher level than it's ever been. And but the issue is whether that, you're delivering well, or not. Well, if you let me answer the question, uh, it's at a higher level. And one of the prerequisites of winning and delivering independence is that you build sustained majority support for that. We have never managed to do that before. We are now in a position where it could be argued uh, that we are now doing that. Now, that is not an easy thing to have done, and that has happened over the past uh, couple of years. So to say there's no progress towards independence, I'm not sure, bears any real scrutiny. On the timescale from here on in, uh, the first priority for me, if I'm re-elected as First Minister, is to continue to lead the country through the COVID crisis. That will be my focus every day. We're not out of COVID yet, although hopefully the, the future looks a bit brighter than it has at any time for the past year. Uh, and when we come out of that crisis, then yes, I do think the country should have a choice of independence so that decisions about our future lie here, not in the hands of Westminster governments led by politicians like Boris Johnson. So you anticipate now, a referendum I, well, by the end of 2023? If you let me finish the answer, you might get the, the answer you're well, looking for. Well, I just for. want a date because people want a date, well, obviously. What I'm trying to tell you is that we have to come out of this crisis. Now, I can't, no more than anybody else across the globe can right now, is give you a fixed date for when COVID will be over. And what I'm saying to you clearly, whether people like it or not, is that getting us through COVID has to be my priority. So it may now, not happen saying, during this next parliament. What it, what I am saying is that if we are out of the COVID crisis, then I would want to see an independence referendum be in the first half of this parliament. Because as we recover from COVID, it's really important that we have the powers and the decision making here in Scotland to ensure that we have the kind of recovery a majority want. What does out of the COVID crisis mean? 
Look, that, that will be when we are not in the acute phase of a pandemic, when people like me are not having to stand up every day and report deaths and hospitalizations when we are clearly in the recovery phase. Now, in terms of the specific time of that, the date of that, that will be for a parliament to judge. I'm telling you what the timescale is that I would like to see us have that independence referendum. But we are living in the midst of a global pandemic. And I would not be doing my job properly as First Minister if I somehow tried to ignore that and just cast that aside. The IFS says that the Scottish Government's used temporary coronavirus funding to pay for some permanent policies. They said that not all of the extra funding, funding was going to COVID-related spending. Some is being used to extend free school meals and free bus travel. Are you shortchanging those who are struggling during this pandemic? Uh, no. So, uh, you know, people can decide whether they agree or disagree with this, but I think uh, lifting the burden of paying for school meals during holiday periods, uh, making it easier for people to travel around, taking some of the financial pressures away from people is part of how we get through and recover from COVID. And in terms of the long-term sustainability of any policy we introduce, that is for our budgetary processes to make sure uh, are, are taken account of, and that is all part of the planning for the next parliament that uh, the SNP uh, is, is doing. So, well, how do you, you know, make these policies sustainable if you're using this short-term funding? Well, that is what we will set in our manifesto. It's what we set out in budgets every single year. Of course, as you know, one of the biggest limitations on our budgeting uh, as a Scottish government is that we don't have access to the unlimited borrowing powers that UK governments have access to. So we have to balance our budget. We don't have a choice over that. We do that every single year, Gary, and we will continue to do well, that. Well, the IFS warned that, the, the, that there would have to be funding from the core budget in 22, 23 and beyond where money is likely to be tight. So these policies... That Welcome you're announcing. to the new world. Well, these policies that you're announcing now may not be permanent then. Of course they are permanent. I wouldn't be announcing policies that I didn't look ahead uh, to the, the budgetary projections that we have. So and you may have to make cuts elsewhere to pay for them? No. Well, how are you no. going to do it? So you, you, it's largesse for everybody, no matter I think, I, the I, fact no, the I, IFS say that money will be really tight. Well, money is always tight, Gary. Money has been tight every single year I've been First Minister, every single year the SNP has been in, in government. We make our choices and we balance our budget. Now, unless you're going to put this question to me in a slightly more developed way, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to answer in a different way. We have to balance our budget. We do that every single year and we will continue to have to do that. So every choice we make, uh, we have to say where the money is coming from and we put forward a budget that shows the choices we make. I think free school meals is a positive and necessary choice to make as part of our efforts to tackle child poverty, doubling the Scottish child payment. Similarly, extending free bus travel, which is important for our climate change objectives, as well as helping people with the costs of travel these are political choices. Offering NHS staff a decent pay rise instead of a 1% insult. These are political choices. And actually, in an election campaign, it's the political choices indicative of your values as a party that we're asking people to judge and to vote well, on. Well, but in your case, obviously, we can judge on your record as well. You said education was a defining mission of the Scottish Government. This was in May 2016. Just last week, Audit Scotland said progress in closing the attainment gap had fallen short of your aims. By that measure, your defining mission has failed, hasn't it? Well, we've been hit by a global pandemic, uh, firstly. Secondly, yes, I do think we've got more progress to make on closing the attainment gap, but we have made real progress over the past five years. If you take the gap between the most deprived and the least deprived pupils achieving uh, level five of the qualification system, uh, that gap has reduced by 10 percentage points. Uh, the gap at level six is reduced by a similar margin. We've got record numbers of young people from our most deprived communities now going into university. We've got a, a higher proportion going into positive destinations overall. So we've made real progress. The Audit Scotland report recognised that. We invest more it falls short of your aims. We've got more work to do. I absolutely recognise that. And you know, Will it the, be the defining mission of the next parliament? Education is always a defining mission. As part of getting us out of COVID and into recovery, absolutely, that is central to everything an SNP government will do. We're putting a lot of emphasis in this election on tackling 
are continuing to tackle some of the underlying causes of educational underattainment, child poverty, for example, which is why having established the Scottish Child Payment in this parliament, we intend to double the value of that over the next parliament. Free school meals is a key part, uh, which you were sort of challenging me on a moment ago uh, as to whether that was an appropriate use of money. That is a key part of dealing with the poverty source of some of the, the reasons for educational underattainment. So this will be a key focus as it has been. We've got record numbers uh, of teachers in uh, schools, well, the highest number of teachers since 2008 overall, the highest number of primary school teachers since 1980. Since I was at primary school, we invest more per pupil than other countries in the UK. So just, the foundations a, are there, the progress is being made and absolutely that will continue to be a defining priority. A final point just on education. I'm afraid time is tight, so just a very brief answer if you wouldn't mind. Uh, we're hearing today about concerns of SQA assessments. John Swinney told us on this programme in February he was confident there'd be no repeat of last year's exam fiasco result. But it seems from the pupils that we've been speaking to they feel a similar situation is developing because they're having to sit tests and they're getting no exam prep time. Well, look, I, I heard uh, the uh, piece on your bulletin and I heard the, the people that was interviewed. I'll certainly go and look at the concerns that are being raised here. I also heard the response of the SQA. It is not expected that exams are replicated in full. Teacher judgment is core to this. Uh, but, you know, this has been an incredibly tough time for young people, so I'm not surprised to hear the anxiety and the concern and we will seek to do everything we can to address and allay that. Nicola Sturgeon, SNP leader, thank you very much for your time this morning. And obviously we will be speaking to the leaders of of the larger parties as this election campaign goes on.